Hey guys, Brendo New Productions here, and I'm going to apologize up front if my voice actually sounds weird. I am feeling a little sick, so I'm sorry. Hopefully, uh, you can actually just bear with it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to start a new series of tutorials. Uh, I am starting to take classes in school uh, that are about Java. And uh, if you didn't know, Java is actually a whole other computer language besides what I normally do, uh, which is VB.net. But Java is a computer language that can be run from uh, the web browser or from the operating system itself and can actually uh, be run on, I think, almost every operating system that exists and is currently on the market. So the reason why, that I really want to learn Java is simply because I can open up my programs to a wider audience and on top of that, uh, I think nowadays uh, more big corporations are wanting Java applications simply because they can be run from the web browser and from the desktop at the same time. So you can have, uh, you could just have users access the application via uh, web browser with no big deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start creating tutorials that relay all the information that I have learned in these classes uh, to you. Now these tutorials shouldn't be or should be pretty different than the uh, Visual Basic .NET tutorial because I'm actually learning with these tutorials. With Visual Basic .NET, everything that I taught you I already knew. So now I'm going to be um, learning as I teach you. So if you guys want to go ahead and learn Java with me, that's great. I will keep doing my VB.NET tutorials, but in any case, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Um, so the first thing you're going to need uh, in order to get started developing with Java is the Java framework itself. Now, most people probably have this on their computer. It is the infamous jre.exe in your processes. <laughs> it's pretty much always running. But So, pretty much all applications that we develop will be running on Java. So, make sure you have the Java framework downloaded before you actually start. And then we're also going to need a uh, Java editor as well. So, I'm for uh, these series of tutorials, I'm going to be using a Java editor called Eclipse. You can find this at Eclipse.org, and uh, we're going to be using Eclipse Classic. Uh, I'm going to be using 3.7 today. I may be upgrading in later tutorials, but we'll just have to see. So go ahead and uh, download that, install it, and then uh, it's pretty easy setup. You just have to declare a few directories, and then you should be greeted with a window like this. Of course, this is some previous code that I was testing just for my own learning purposes, but yeah. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, start a new Java project because I want to delve right into the basics. And uh, this project is actually going to be called Tutorial. And uh, these should be all good. I'm just going to press Next. Now Java is a language that is very much like C++, C Sharp, and uh, PHP. Just go ahead and press Finish once you're done with that. Um, it uses a semi semicolon structure, which uh, helps keep things semicolon and uh, curly brace structure, which really helps keep things organized. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is start on our first project. So on the left here, you're going to want to click on the tutorial folder, uh, right click, press New, and then click Class, and then you just need to name the class. This one's going to be called Tutorial. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and press finish. And it automatically generated uh, the starting code. If you've been following my VB.NET tutorials, you'll notice that this starting code is very similar to the VB.NET starting code. So the first thing we're going to learn how to do in Java is we're going to actually learn how to create comments. So in your code, uh, most likely what you want to do is tell users what your code does. So you can do this by either typing two backslashes and then the comment, or by typing a backslash and an asterisk and then entering down a couple lines and uh, it automatically fills in the comment section for you. So this is a tutorial. So you can do this for a big about sections or copyright material, anything like that. So let's go ahead and dive right into what we're going to be doing. Now Java, uh, this program actually, doesn't have what we know as IntelliSense, which uh, pretty much just 
tells you what you're supposed to code as you're typing it. And um, it doesn't have automatic case correction either. So you need to make sure that you get case sensitivity down and actually know the code because it's not going to autocorrect it for you. So as you notice here, we're declaring a class, which is where all of our code will be stored. And this is actually a public class. And this is just the name of the class. This open bracket actually opens up the class and this closes it. So everything in this space is the class. This public simply means that it can be accessed from anywhere inside this actual .java file. So the first thing any Java project needs is a main void or a main static. And what this does is it actually executes the program and tells it what to do as soon as it starts up. So we're just going to go ahead and declare that. We're going to make it a public. And then um, we're going to declare the type, which is a static. And this simply means that it will not be interacting with objects. And for now, we are not using objects in our development. We are simply using straight coding. So this will allow us to easily tell the program just to run the code. And then we're going to type void, which means that the, this code will not return any values. It will just execute. And then we're going to type main. And this is actually the name of it. And then we need to open up parentheses. And um, as you remember from vue.net, or you don't, um, we have to type in actual parameters or arguments. So we can declare what these arguments are going to be by typing capital S for string, and then string. And then you need to open close brackets. It will automatically do that for you once you hit a left bracket uh, space, and then type args. And then once you do that, you need to open up a curly bracket, press enter, and it will automatically close it for you. So now we've got our very own main sub. So we can actually go ahead and comment this and sub. It will run on startup. So this is going to basically be a hello world program. Uh, that simply displays the message hello world and we might actually do some more interesting stuff later on but for now this is all we're going to do so the first thing we need to do is actually use the system dot out namespace and um, as you can see here it does have a little bit here you can actually press control and space and it will show template proposals but for now we're just going to ignore all those pop-ups and um, strictly code so we're going to type system.out, which um, pretty much tells the system to output something. And then we're going to tell it to print ln, or print line. And then this is the thing that we actually need to print in these parentheses with quotations. So we're going to type hello world. Oh, not worked. World. And then the end of every command in Java actually requires a semicolon. So we just need to end the line with a semicolon to tell them that is the end of the line. And as I mentioned at the uh, beginning of the tutorial, these are case sensitive. And system is giving us an error because it needs to be capitalized. So once we do that, our code should be good. And we can actually run the project by pressing run tutorial.java up here and just pressing OK. And then it'll take a little minute. It builds. And then uh, it will run. And in the console down here, as you can see, it says, hello world. And that is because we actually typed hello world and said for that to be, uh, we actually wanted that to be said. Now we can actually level it up one and actually start using variables. So what we're going to do is declare a variable with the value of hello world and then make it print the variable. If you don't know what a variable is, it is an item that simply can be manipulated and it's going to constantly be manipulated through uh, our programming with Java. So we're just going to create a string here. So um, I think we just need to type string, or maybe with a capital S, string, uh, text, equal to, and then we're going to type hello world. And then, once we're done with that, we need a semicolon. OK, so it's popping as a warning. The value of the local variable, OK. So we did code this right. So this string with a capital S is just declaring a variable that is a string. A string uh, is something that holds actual text. So that's what we're going to be using here. We're going to be holding actual text. This is the name of the string. We just named it text. And then we put the equal sign because we're saying that text is going to equal. And then in quotations, we put hello world. 
and then we ended it with a semicolon to tell it that that's the end of the line. And now we can actually print line text. So this will print the variable text. Now we can actually run this and let's change it up and put some exclamation points in here. And uh, it'll appear in the console. Let's go ahead and press OK. And you can see here, here it is with a bunch of uh, exclamation points or marks and uh, we're looking good. So now we can actually do some more advanced things with our application by using um, well they're not really that advanced but by using backslashes to actually declare symbols so if you want to type a quotation around hello world you type backslash and then quotation backslash or maybe it's the other slash I think it's or is that the backslash or is that the forward slash okay well it's the slash that is right above the enter key below the backspace key. I think that's, yeah, that's backslash. These are forward slashes up here by the comments. So if you type a backslash, you can actually type a symbol in. So what we did here is we typed backslash and then um, the quotation marks. As we did here, backslash and then quotation marks. So this will actually output simply quotation marks. So let's go ahead and try that. Now in our console we have quotation marks around hello world. We can do this with several other symbols such as dollar signs, actual backslashes, and uh, you can actually declare a new line by doing backslash n. Uh, so now what it's going to output is hello world, um, and then on a new line it is going to output exclamation points. So let's go ahead and run this as well. And as you can see here, there is a new line, hello world, and then a new line which declares exclamation points. So that's pretty much all this tutorial is going to be about. Uh, we went over the basics of classics and static voids, uh, especially the main static void. And then we went over some uh, how to display text, how to use simple variables, and then how to manipulate those variables using characters. So. Um, I'm going to go more into advanced detail as I learn how to do this stuff, but for now, this is pretty much all I know how to do. But hey, it does something, right? Right. In later tutorials, we'll be focusing on object-oriented programming in order to make buttons and special interfaces, maybe even some graphics such as rectangles. But um, for now, this is it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and um, have a great day. Talk to you guys later.